Hello and welcome to J Prime 2018, <laughs> which is brought to you by the Bulgarian Jerk Gang of Five Mess. <laughs> so this year is this year is really amazing. Can you can you? Switch the slides, please, because I don't know what you've put there. <laughs> so this really is really here. It's really amazing because we we again we are pushing forward and we passed another boundary. So last year we were sold out. You remember? This year we were sold out twice. <laughs> yeah. Last week we were sold out the first time. We. We gave some more tickets to all of you, and they were sold out again this, this week. So we have 32 speakers. We, uh, out of them, we have seven or nine Java champions, depending how you count them, Java Wh whether you count the, the organizers or not. We have 800 attendees. I, I almost said 8,000. 800 attendees. Uh, and yeah, we were sold out twice. So trust me. The best people are here. So, yeah, you can tell more about the video recording. Oh, yeah, we, we are recording everything, and there's streaming. It's always a secret, and always everybody knows about it. But we never uh, talk about it a lot before the conference we want, because we want people to come here and pay the ticket price. <laughs> no, because the, re the reality is because we are not sure that the streaming will work. So we actually wait for the last minute to see that, yeah, it's kind of working, so let's put it on the website, which actually have been done, I don't know, five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago. So yesterday we wanted to check everything. It was one o'clock and there are two people here trying to stream. We were having beer. I was the lucky one having beer at a beer place. And yeah, we are also streamed on the virtual jerk. So thanks a lot to the virtual jerk leaders who are here with us. Simon and Oleg, thank you. Okay, we also have a game for you, uh, similar to last year. If you visit the stands of all of our sponsors and get a stamp, you have a book in your back, you get a special prize, which you can get from the registration desk. So don't be shy, visit our sponsors and get a stamp. And a few short words about our entertainment room. Yes, uh, so last year we tried, this year we are trying even harder with the entertainment room or entertainment zone. So it's on the right side when you go out. Each of our co-organizers and biggest sponsors have a SWOT. The SWOT is in the agenda and basically they can decide whatever they want to do. Last year there was uh, cocktails, beers, uh, some pizzas and etc. This year there will be some IoT stuff, some... Uh, cryptocurrency or some other currency stuff. So check out the, the SWATs and the entertainment zone. The SWATs are pretty huge there, three, two, three hours. So there is time during the breaks or if some of the talks is not good enough, which I doubt, but yeah. So we were, we were constantly asked about the Wi-Fi password. So uh, yeah, we made, it, we made it hard for you. Uh, we have a Wi-Fi password. It's J Prime 2018, and in order to make it even harder, the P is capital. So it's J Prime with capital P. And yeah, you can t tell us more about the craft beer. Yeah, there is uh, here it says Ivane, but still I will talk about the, the, the beer. So there, there is a beer, uh, thanks to Hughes, maybe. You don't know Hughes, but it's pretty good beer. And Hughes is... Uh, <laughs> Hughes, maybe some of you don't know, but it, it's coming from Plovdiv, and the idea behind the Hughes is Tepeta. So Plovdivski Tepeta, whatever. So each day after lunch, you can grab beers. It's actually behind us. There are two fridges. And please do not start from the morning. <laughs> I know that we are Bulgarians, but... Yeah, we have a lot of visitors, so. <laughs> okay, so 
I told you that we are pushing harder this year, and one of the things that we introduced is the workshops. So in the room behind this one, we have five amazing workshops done by five amazing speakers or work workshop creators, and you can go there. Uh, they are twice as long as, uh, as a normal conference session, and you should bring your laptop or just stay there and indulge and uh, watch the, the others uh, that brought their laptop do the workshop. But yeah, it, it will be fun. There's no pre-registration. You don't have to pre-register anywhere, but uh, make sure that you are there on time because there are just 20 slots, 20 places uh, to, to stay there. So be there on time. And what's that? I can't read that. Ah. Yeah, as you know, uh, during the year, We've done a lot of J Professionals events. J Professionals is our more hipster-like conference, which is completely free. And we did it in Varna. We did one in Plovdiv. Yeah, let me, let me because I saw him entering the room, uh, let me hear a big round of applause for Duichin from Plovdiv. I'll tell you why. Uh, he, he, spared, he spared us the whole organization of J, uh, J Professionals Plovdiv, so he did it by himself, and I shouldn't, shouldn't have done anything. I just went there and uh, enjoyed the conference, which is great. Yeah, the, actually, our idea of J Professionals on tour was exactly this, some local developer to take over the whole organization of J Professionals. So if any of you is from Varna, Burgas, Ruse, or whatever, and if he decides to make J Professionals, we will, of course, support with the spam and the speakers and etc. But if, if he can manage to take uh, the whole organization, it will be great. Uh, also, we started with the Java Beer events last year. As you may know, every month or so, we do a Java Beer event in Sofia, which is just a networking event where we get drunk and where we talk. And Duichin, which we just mentioned, is taking uh, the Java beer events in Plovdiv. And the beginning of the next month, there will be a Java beer event in Sofia and Java beer event in Plovdiv as well. So I hope to see most of you there. So this year, we uh, want to invite some of, of our notable speakers on the stage. Not that, not, not, that uh, not everyone is from our speaker list is notable, but yeah, some, some of them are already here in the morning because they have sessions. So we, yeah, we decided to, to have them on stage and uh, ask them uh, some questions uh, on your behalf. So first of all, let me, let me introduce uh, Simon Ritter uh, from Azul to you. Simon, thank you, thank you for coming to J-Prime. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well. I'm very happy to be here again. OK, great. Again, yeah, because you were here last, last no, week. No, uh, yeah. You were here last week two and years two years ago, ago yes. right, yep. uh, at the other venue. So Simon, uh, I'd like to ask you some questions about Java SE. Uh, this year, uh, the standard edition of Java, the Java that we all use, changed its release cycle, its delivery model. That's so, right. Uh, do you, do you see any change in the adoption of, uh, of Java, a few releases of Java? Yes, yes, I see a lot of changes. Um, because we've moved to this six-month release cycle, and obviously JDK 9 came out in September last year, JDK 10 came out just in March, JDK 11 is coming out in September. So I go and I talk to a lot of developers, and I've been saying, how many people are using, how many people are using JDK 8? Eight. Eight. Right. How many people are using JDK 9? Yes, that's kind of what I see. There are not many people using JDK 9, and that's because of this, this very quick release cycle. I think what's going to happen is a lot of people are looking at JDK 11 as, because it's what they call a long-term support release. That's the one that a lot of people are thinking about moving to, especially because JDK 8 support is going to end at the beginning of next year. So that's kind of a logical thing to do. Okay, you mentioned JDK 11. What are the most notable features that will come in JDK 11? JDK 11's probably not got that many big things in it. Um, I mean, Flight Recorder is probably the biggest thing because that's been open source now. It used to be closed. Now it's going to be part of the open JDK, so that's nice. Um, the removal of the Java SE.ee module, so Corba is gone. Anybody using Corba? OK, good. Oh, 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 oh there you go. Um, and the inclusion of HTTP2 as a part of the standard. So, oh, and there's one other thing, which is the Epsilon garbage collector, which doesn't collect garbage. So, 
Okay, awesome. So you're going to talk after this uh, opening uh, session. So yes. thank you, thank you, and thank you enjoy the conference. Thank you. So next up is my friend David Blevins. David, welcome to Bulgaria. Again. Yeah, <laughs> Again. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. It's uh, we're back after three years, and we really, really love it here. I mean, everyone's so fantastic. Like, the culture here has a really hardworking spirit, which is very obvious. And the organizers and everybody who attends, it's really fantastic. And the other spirit that you get in the it, those spirits are good. Like, like <laughs> Rakia is also very, is also a good spirit. Right. Okay. So I'd like to ask you some questions, or actually, we would like to ask you some questions about uh, my favorite topic, microprofile. Sure. Uh, so can you tell us more about microprofile? It was introduced two years ago, but what it is? Okay. So you know, the the pace of Java E had come to be really slow, um, and we got together kind of all the same people who are in Java EE and realized one of the contributing factors is that we innovate in our own separate corners and only when we feel confident do we come together and actually collaborate and it's kind of really late in the process. And so what we wanted to do was speed things up by basically incubating ideas together. They may prove to be useful, they may prove to be bad ideas, but basically to prototype stuff together in a, in a very fast moving open source code first driven approach. And so we launched off the micro profile as just a regular project out in GitHub and we eventually moved it into the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, and it's been proving to be very successful. We've developed, you know, about five to eight different specifications in various forms so far. Um, and it's, you know, the, the, that pace is really fast compared to how we had been going. And we basically moved, started, started moving some of them from uh, the Eclipse Foundation into the JCP. So the config JSR is the first one uh, that we put into the standards process. So that's basically showing that this idea of incubating ideas together can bear some fruit in future standards. Okay, so my question is actually, so you started MicroProfile with just three specifications. Right. Everybody thought, oh, isn't this too few specifications, actually? There was a big discussion, should we use more or is that enough? But now you've got a lot of new specifications, sure. like, you know, uh, all the circuit breakers uh, and so on and so on. When are you going to stop putting new specification and keep it really MicroProfile? or the micro stands for the microservices and not exactly by the amount of specifications. Right. So I think that, the, that there's a lot of ways to look at that question and most people who are technical would look for a technical solution. I think that's a mistake. I don't think that if we add the technical ability to split things up or whatever, that actually changes anything. I think what we need is for people to say, of the eight things you have, these are the three things that are most useful to me could you just give me those three? You know, without a feedback loop there for people to keep what's there honest, I don't think that there's any way to technically solve the lack of feedback. You know what I mean? So, so what would, what's really required is for people to try these things out, discover which ones are useful and which ones are not, uh, and, and, and give that feedback to the process because ultimately MicroProfile is about getting quick prototypes out there so the feedback loop can start as early as possible. So without the feedback loop, there's no way for us to hit the target. Okay, and my last question is, do you know what is there on the, on the photo? Can you recognize that? Yeah, yeah, Raspberry <laughs> Pis that we built. Yeah, <laughs> it was from last year and uh, it's, they are running a uh, micro profile there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. What was the question? That was the question. I recognize <laughs> can, them. Can yeah, you recognize it? <laughs> Yeah, well, so what we're doing with, with this demonstration is the, the two pies, the two stacks on the sides, each represent a data center. Uh, and the stack in the middle represents the client side. And actually, I don't know if you can see it in this picture, but there's a router that separates the, the, the client side, the stack in the middle that's black, from the two data centers. And what we do when we develop all the stuff is, is you know, prove that it can actually work by pulling the cables on these things. Um, physically pulling the cable, right? And so you try and simulate a lot of failure scenarios and it doesn't necessarily work so well uh, because you spend most of your time writing the simulation code. Whereas, you know, you pull the cable and then your wife says, let's go have dinner. Oh, so you come back and you plug it in and it doesn't work after an hour, but it does after five minutes. 
you know, so it's to keep, keep the development honest. Okay, thank you and enjoy the conference. All right, thank you so much, guys. And last but not least, you know, I, I prepared the content of this slide, so as I prepared it, we should have questions about Java, right? So, yes, today last but not this least, time we're keeping the more video of the e. on Jakarta. E. This time, no spring here, just EE on the stage, yes. Okay, David, welcome to Bulgaria again. Thank so, you. you are becoming one of our veteran speakers. It's your third J Prime out of four, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, great, great to have you here again. So, the big news, at least for me and for most of the people here, I guess, uh, from the last 12 months is uh, Java EE moving to Jakarta EE. Yeah, I think th 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 there are two news since last year. So first we have released uh, at the end of the summer Java E8. I mean at that time a lot, lot of people had questions about uh, Java E, would it be released or not? So that's one thing, Java E8 has been finalized. And at the same time we also said that we basically want to change the way the platform is evolving. So we Oracle have discussed with the different actors from the Java E ecosystem and we have decided to move the development of the Java E platform to the Eclipse Foundation. Okay. And one of the reasons for that, it has been mentioned by David, is that, uh, well, we got a lot of complaints about the speed at which the platform was evolving. So we thought that by doing that, moving the development outside of the, a, a single vendor, which was Oracle, we would be able to basically evolve the platform more uh, quickly, being more agile. So whenever we think that things need to be added to the platform, uh, we should be able to do that in a relatively uh, short period of time. Okay, great. And what's, what's the current status of Jakarta and when do you plan to release the first version? So the first version will be based on Java E8. Uh, this summer we should have an initial release of Jakarta E, which would basically be uh, bug compatible with Java E8. That would be Eclipse Glassfish 5. And from that point on, we will be able to evolve the platform. So um, adding, well, discussing on which features we would like to tackle and address in the platform and then uh, add them technically to the platform. So what we are doing right now is we are also working on defining uh, different processes such as uh, how we can define a spec that would be part of the platform, what the platform will be exactly and those kind of things. So right now there are a lot of, stuff, a lot of works going on and I think that uh, around this summer we will be able to technically and actively work on evolving the platform. Okay, great. Wish you, wish you success with, uh, with Jakarta and I hope that the synergy between MicroProfile and Jakarta is pretty good for the future. It, so it has to be. We it are, has to be, right. <laughs> they are both under the Eclipse Foundation, yeah, so that was one of the... Yeah. Behind, so. And that was one of the reasons why we thought that the Eclipse Foundation would be a good place for uh, Jakarta e. Okay, great. Thanks a lot and have fun at the conference. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so before... before before we, we uh, yeah. Okay, so th this is my slide actually. Uh, how many of you have visited our website and it has not crashed and it has not certificate issues? It was working. Oh my God, not, not very few of you. I have to, we have to fix our 20%, website. 20%, 20% 20 okay. okay. And you probably have seen the speakers lineup this year. I believe this is one of the greatest speaker lineup we've ever had for this four year conference. So I'm quite happy to see that uh, we are actually becoming a world-class conference. I believe everybody is okay with that for me. But to become a really world-class conference, we need uh, people to hear for us. So please use this tweet handle as you see it uh, there up. You can read it, yes. Uh, please use this tweet handle, send photos, send your feedback, send your emotions, send whatever interesting stuff you heard about the, the session, help us you know, spread the word. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, last, last, one last thing. Uh, yeah, don't forget to collect your stamp, but ignore this. Uh, I want to, and we want to thank you all for being here. There will be no break before the next session. So the next session will start right away. So uh, do not go for coffee. And I want to mention something that many of you know, but this conference is... Uh, non-profit or a community-driven conference, which means even though we have a ticket price, none of the money that we collect are staying for us or anything like that. 
we basically donate all the money to the Bulgarian Java user group and all the J professional events and everything during the year. So basically all the sponsors that you see at J prime are eventually becoming a sponsors of the Bulgarian Java user group because even if some money are left, no one is taking this money and we actually use this money to finance or to sponsor all the events of the Bulgarian Java user group during the year. To bring so, speakers, to be world-class speakers. Okay, so thank you all and enjoy the conference and we hope for a positive feedback after these two days. Tweet, tweet, yes, please tweet. Okay, so <laughs> let me welcome on stage Simon, who is going to be our first speaker and there will be also a talk in the next room. The workshops start in the afternoon and you have Badges where you can see the agenda.